Howdy folks, and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles, and after her surprise appearance on last night's official World of Warships VE Day Parade livestream, I thought it was entirely appropriate for today's video to be all about the Akazuki. That of course is this Akazuki, the Tier 8 Japanese destroyer, not to be confused with this Akazuki, that's also a Japanese destroyer, or this Akazuki. She's a cat who gate-crashed last night's official World of Warships livestream. But nobody seemed to mind. In fact, chat went quite berserk when they saw her in the background. No, today it's all about this Akazuki, the Tier 8 Japanese destroyer that my cat just happens to be named after, and which means, in Japanese, Autumn Moon. This Akazuki is being sailed by... Um, I swear people come up with these names just to laugh themselves silly listening to me trying to pronounce them, but I'll give it a go. Gekahenki 50? Yeah. I don't know for sure, but I suspect, based purely on the quality of communication going on in chat, that this is, once again, a North American server replay. But I'd be happy to be proven wrong. I've actually had quite a few Akazuki replays uh, sent in over the course of the last couple of days. I'm not entirely sure why. And some of them scored more kills than this, some of them scored more damage than this. One in particular I almost turned into a video um, because of the sheer amount of damage that the player involved managed to do while simultaneously making some of the most idiotic decisions I have, I have seen anybody making in World of Warships in quite some time. But, well I can imagine what the comment section of that particular video would have been. And I briefly considered doing a sort of, well, here's what you did wrong type of video. Uh, despite the impressive damage that you managed to score, it could have been so much better. But I didn't feel that that would have been fair on the player concerned, because they did have a good result, and I can appreciate the kind of hate they would have had in the comments of the video. So instead we have Gekahenki50 here, also in the Akazuki. But don't worry, um, there's plenty of entertainment value in this replay as well. That's the reason why I picked it. Gekka's fired off some preemptive torpedoes from his single torpedo launcher, but he's got his torpedo reload booster handy just in case he needs it in a hurry. And he's popped his engine boost. The Akazuki is a very capable little ship. It can put out a frightening amount of damage in a relatively short period of time, but it's certainly its biggest disadvantage is probably that it's not very fast. In fact, it's downright slow. Uh, for a tier 8 destroyer with a top speed of only 33 knots. Obviously you can boost this with a speed flag, but the engine boost is invaluable when it comes to getting away from anything that you can't outfight. Right now he's not using it for that purpose of course, he's just trying to get into a decent position. He knows that he's the closest ship to something on the enemy team, or he was, because the RPF indicator was up. He just doesn't know exactly who it is, but now, now somebody else is the closest ship on his team to whoever on the enemy team has the RPF skill. So that's interesting. Equally interesting is the fact that while the enemy team are hotly contesting the other two caps, they don't appear to be contesting this one. The Kagero, that he thought was AFK earlier, and is very definitely not, and in fact is going to be an invaluable teammate, has already started capping. And he's sufficiently confident in the amount of backup that he has, not just with the Kagero, but also with uh, Fiji and Massachusetts to the east, and the USS Dallas to the south, uh, that he feels quite safe, at least initially, opening fire on the Benson over there as he slides into the cap to assist the Kagero, but then the Gneiser now turns up as well, and mm, yeah. Let's play this safe. He pops his smoke. I can never remember what the torpedo range is on the Benson. I know it's the first American destroyer that absolutely definitely can, even when it's stock, um, stealth launch its torpedoes, but I can never remember the exact range. Is it 9.5 or 9.2 kilometers? Either way, it's possible that there are Benson torpedoes on the way. I'm pretty sure, not 100%, but pretty sure that he's far enough away that the Benson's torpedoes couldn't find him in the smokescreen uh, and would end up short. But not 100% sure. He's popping out of his own smokescreen now, uh, because the Benson can't see him. And the Gneiser now is on the far side of the island over there, so... 
he's able to get some more shots over the low ground at the edge of the island there and rain further pain and grief down on the Geniser now and then back inside the smoke screen they've already capped now by the way and the enemy team have taken Bravo and they're in the process of taking Alpha and yep sure enough Benson torpedoes oh dear said the Dallas but yep sure enough <laughs> <laughs> narrow escape there for the Dallas and in fact they're having a very good laugh about it in chat I just looked it up by the way 9.2 kilometers so Gekka here was in no real danger at least from the first wave of the Benson's torpedoes and now that he's in open water he's able to uh, spot from a safe distance the second wave of Benson torpedoes so things have gone pretty well so far over here in Capture Point Charlie not so much for the rest of the team, because the enemy team have taken Alpha and Bravo, and they've managed to sink four ships in the process for only one of their own in return. Gekka, however, knows what he needs to do, and is communicating his intentions to his team in chat. It's time to push on into Bravo, however, that's an awful lot of enemy ships. Maybe pushing straight on into Bravo right now isn't such a great idea, maybe... Maybe we take advantage of the fact that we have two surviving ships over in Alpha who probably aren't going to be surviving ships for that much longer and take advantage of the likelihood that those enemy ships over in Bravo are probably going to be splitting their fire trying to take them out in a crossfire. Gekka takes the opportunity to finish off an extremely low health Pensacola but at the moment the well most of the other ships over here in Charlie aren't actually in much of a position to do anything about these perfect broadside targets over in the direction of Cap Point. Bravo, the Fiji is chasing after a Fubuki to the north and the Massachusetts is on the far side of an island which basically just leaves Gekka and the Dallas. The Kagero is over here as well but you shouldn't expect too much in the way of gunfire support from a Kagero. Nice torpedo hit from the Scharnhorst. Didn't sink him but hey, damage is damage. Some Fubuki torps to the rear, keeping everybody busy. The problem here, of course, is that he's had to pop his smokescreen, and, well, he was the one spotting most of those targets, so now he's got nothing to shoot at. Now, if the Kagero, which has better stealth, could stay outside of the smokescreen and spot targets, that would be fantastic. And that's exactly what he's asking the Kagero to do. And that is, in fact, exactly what the Kagero is doing. Like I said, very valuable teammate to have. Because, of course, the Kagero is not going to start shooting since his guns are crap. But he's entirely happy to creep forward outside of the smoke screen, continue spotting, in addition to the work that the friendly carrier was just doing, and potentially also get some of his torpedoes away, which he can, of course, do undetected. You see that? Teamwork. You can't put a price on it. Although, if there was a way to put a price on it, I'm sure Wargaming would, but for the moment, you can't put a price on it. Oh, and in case you're wondering about the shocking amount of damage he was doing to that Sean horse with poxy little 100mm guns, yes, he's running the IFHE skill. That, in combination with the high explosive penetration buff that Japanese destroyers on with 100mm guns get, means that this thing can do a rather large amount of damage to a Tier 7 battleship. Now, I don't know if you noticed it, but there was a brief contribution made to the conversation going on in chat from one of... The teammates that died over in that direction. I know Akazuki, it was very rude. He said, all of you guys over at sea, as in, I know, I'm telling the story, Akazuki. <laughs> I'll get to it. That all of the guys over here suck. Now, I don't know about you, but I think that's a fairly bold claim to make from somebody who hasn't sunk anything and hasn't captured anything towards the teammates who have sunk a lot of things and have at least captured something. But bear that comment in mind as this battle unfolds. The Kagero, who you can see smoking up over there, has managed to get his torpedoes away and has just managed to slip over the boundary of Capture Point Bravo. Gekka Henke, meanwhile, is advising the rest of his team to not push past those islands up ahead. And that is very good advice. Because, of course, all of the enemy team who had managed to dispatch the rest of our teammates over in Alpha are now heading in this direction, so there is likely to be a lot of enemy ships over there. Yekahenki slips into the Kagero's smokescreen just in time to avoid air attack. Thank you once again, Kagero. And despite the fact that none of them can see out of the smokescreen, 
the friendly carrier is once again doing some pretty invaluable spotting, allowing Gekahenki and others to rain down death and destruction on the enemy Devonshire, although looks like the carrier's aircraft all got shot down. Somebody's going to have to pop outside the smoke. Kagero? Yep, there he goes. I do so love it when you have a teammate who just knows what needs to be done, and he's managed to spot some incoming torpedoes as well, and just does it without having to be prompted. Tries to finish off the job on the Devonshire, but well, the Devonshire knows what's good for him and he stops shooting and gone undetected. However, shots from the Massachusetts were in the air. He's finally managed to clear the islands to the east and he's putting his not inconsiderable firepower to use and finish the Devonshire off anyway. Now the enemy Massachusetts, the Kagero smokescreen, has just started to dissipate and not wanting to get shot at by a Massachusetts primaries or secondaries, I can never remember the range on them, I know it's a lot, uh, Gekahenki is popping his own smoke. And he's obviously going to take advantage of that to get some damage stacked up on the enemy Massachusetts over there, just as an enemy York pops up and uh, sprays some speculative shots into his smokescreen, narrowly missing. Enemy Warspite to the north, try to get some shots into the friendly Massachusetts. His torpedoes are back up and the Massachusetts on the enemy team is within torpedo range, so he's not really losing anything by uh, letting them go. Oh, there's the enemy Z-23. Uh, nope. Doesn't have the arcs to hit him. That's a bit of a shame. The enemy Gneiser now, who was so badly damaged, has actually managed to recover a fair amount of health. So a couple of Gekahanki's teammates have been doing their best. Uh, with their limited firepower to knock him back down again. Surprisingly, it's actually the Kagero that gets the kill. In fact, he gets a double strike. He finishes off the Gneiser now with his guns, believe it or not, and torpedoes the Z-23. Yes, that's right. All Japanese destroyers have guns, not just the gunboats like the Akazuki. Even the Kagero's guns can be useful under specific circumstances. Unfortunately, the Kagero has gotten a little bit too close to that Massachusetts and he's now taking the full force of the Massachusetts secondaries, but, well, that means the Massachusetts isn't looking this way, although he probably is now that he's managed to sink the Kagero. But he's not focusing his secondaries on Gekahenki, and that's all the excuse he needs. He's swinging around, looks like he's trying to kill off, or was trying to kill off the friendly Massachusetts there, who looks like he took a fearsome beating from the war spite up to the north, uh, but too little, too late, there was just too much fire coming in for the enemy battleship to survive. But now, as Gekahenki 50 rains pain and grief down on the enemy York over there, who's desperately trying to get out of firing range, there are only three enemy ships left alive. And five friendlies, and I'm pretty sure the York isn't going to be staying alive for too much longer. That's not bad for a bunch of players who apparently suck, according to our critic in chat earlier. Our critic, who I hasten to remind you, had some pretty bold words to say about the only members of his team who'd actually managed to sink or capture anything. And there goes the York. Well, it was only really a matter of time, and the destruction of the York means that there are now only two enemy ships left alive, and Gekahenki has just earned his third kill. Two enemy ships left alive, three kills, two plus three. There's a possible Kraken on the table here. He's going to have to kill both of them, of course. Now, unless that War Spike gets very lucky, and it could happen because the War Spike's 15 inch guns are on the accurate side of the scale, so he could absolutely hit and kill Gekahenki's Akazuki, which would be a bit of a bummer after this uh, extremely well played game thus far, but well, it's all good because he's not even aiming at Gekahenki. He's going after the extremely low health Massachusetts to the south, which, in the War Spite's defence, is uh, absolutely the best target to be shooting at under the circumstances. Unfortunately, he's now managed to execute a turn uh, in an attempt to get away from this really annoying Akazuki, which will put him on the far side of that island, but does also mean that all of his guns are pointing the wrong way, and what the hell kind of dive bomber attack was that? <laughs> He didn't he did he attack too early? <laughs> I think he did. Wow. It looks like the Massachusetts might actually be the one to get the kill. Or well, he would have been. If Gekka Henke hadn't set a fire on the war spite. Kill number four.
Some well-deserved congratulations coming there in chat from his surviving teammates and one of his no longer surviving teammates, the Kagero. Uh, the rest of the team, suspiciously quiet on the subject of who does and doesn't suck at this point. This, of course, just leaves the enemy carrier, but he's only tier 6, he's a Ryujo, and uh, while it's impossible to deplane a carrier anymore, the squadrons that he is capable of putting into the air are running very, very low on aircraft. Friendly carriers drop some fighters up ahead, which seems like a bit of a waste of time. I mean, they're no use to anybody. The only thing they're going to do is get shot down by the enemy Ryujo's anti-aircraft guns and combat air patrol. They're not actually protecting anybody in that location, but well, whatever. The friendly Massachusetts, who is perilously low on health, has been advised that it might be a good idea for him to slip over the boundary of capture point Alpha and take that. Not that there's much danger of the team losing at this point, but he is on very, very low health. He's a natural target for a carrier, regardless of what tier it may or may not be, and it would be a shame to get sunk when he's done so well at this point in the battle. The benefit of going for Alpha, which he is doing now, is also that any aircraft sent by the Ryujo, thirsty to get a fancy kill on a low health Massachusetts, are going to have to fly over an awful lot of anti-aircraft guns to get there and probably won't make it. And yes, you're not imagining things, those are high explosive citadel hits <laughs> on the Ryujo. And along with the high caliber award, there's the Confederate. Unfortunately, the team are doing so well at this point that they're about to hit a thousand points and the enemy carrier is going to get away with it. So, no crack and unleash, but hey, four kills, confederate, high calibre and 200,000 damage will just have to do. That was more than, it says it right there, if you don't believe me, more than 700 gun hits. Wow. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, well done. Very well done to Gekahenki50. And also his teammates over at Capture Point Charlie, who, despite the hasty assessment of several other teammates who look like they fell out of the stupid tree and hit themselves on the head all the way down off every branch on the way to the bottom, and who most likely wouldn't recognise good teamwork if it fell out of the same tree and gave them an additional smack on the head for good measure. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed that one, because that's all I have for today. And as always, take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you next time.